historian and filmmaker Tom Rousel, and I'm headed out to go camping on the epic landscape of Dartmoor in Devon, England. In this video, I'll show you some of the amazing Neolithic and Bronze Age history found on Exmoor and Dartmoor, and I will also teach you some of the enchanting local folklore of the Moors. I've just woken up here on Dartmoor, slept out on the moors. It was a bit windy when I went to bed, but it was dry. But I woke up in soaking wet tent. Now I've camped out here next to this circular enclosure, right up on the hills on a windy, desolate place. Why would someone stack these rocks in this way? Is it a stone circle? It seems like one a bit, doesn't it? But actually, this is built in the Bronze Age and it was only intended as an animal enclosure. Sometimes the animals here, they wander in and out of it. Obviously, it doesn't work to keep them in. But a few thousand years ago, maybe 3,000 years ago, they were a bit higher and it worked to keep the animals inside. It's remembered, even today, what its original purpose was. No one calls it a stone circle. It's called a pound because it's a compound for animals, and it always has been. But the name that it's had since medieval times is Grimm's Pound. Grimm, you may or may not be aware, is one of the names of the Norse god Odin. Grimmir means the masked one, or the hooded one. The one who can, it's a concealing thing. And that is the name which Odin gives himself when he comes to us in the form of a man, when he is disguised as a man, usually an elderly man in the stories, some grey-bearded, sort of unassuming character, maybe a beggar. Somehow there must have been a Norse influence here, and somehow this Bronze Age Indo-European animal compound became associated with a pagan god. And can we assume, therefore, that this place was also the site of pagan rituals to that god? Who knows? It's a mysterious place. I'm sure that anyone coming here a thousand years ago would have felt that this was an eerie and magical place. And perhaps they weren't aware of what kind of a person would have built an animal enclosure of this kind except a god. Presumably there was a wooden gate here at one point and they'd have a corral and just, you know, herd all their animals in here through this passageway. It's hard to understand how exactly, they did, why they did it all with stone and why they didn't just use wood. Much cheaper and easier. This circular enclosure is inside Grimm's Pound. Doesn't look like much. And no, it's not a stone circle. This is the, the outline of a Bronze Age hut. Um, very, very small dwelling place. The stones probably just formed the base, you know, and then afterwards on top of it was a structure made of wood and mud or whatever. Now, I suppose that this is too small for it to be an all year round dwelling place. So I'm going to guess, being that the Indo-Europeans were pastoralists, practicing transhumans, they came up onto the moor during some seasons, bring their animals into this pen and lived in here to, for a part of the year, or at least the, and the herders who were responsible for these animals lived here. Um, it's quite amazing that this is just still here after all these thousands of years. I think one of the main reasons is that it's just such a, a remote and secluded spot that no one's bothered to come and collect this stone and use it to build a church or anything. So here we have the humble remains of a of a some cattle herder from thousands of years ago. And his house is still here and his animal compound is still here. But 
Uh, who's to say whether this, hut, this little hut hasn't had more significance to subsequent generations of people living in Britain? They may have even attached some mythological significance to this place. Hey Wilma, I'm home! The most obvious symbol of the transition from Neolithic to Bronze Age Britain is the burial mound or barrow. Exmoor has loads of them built by the Beaker folk 4,000 years ago. Even today, locals honour their dead on these barrows, but in a new way, with engraved stones left on top. Back to Dartmoor, and it's time to look for a stone circle. Out of the wheel, the secret wheel, us to pass the bridge. Trolls in the guise of horses. quite as atmospheric and evocative as the site of an English moor with an ancient Neolithic stone circle. These have captivated the imaginations of British people for thousands of years. No one has, for most of their history, has known where they came from. Now we know that they were built not by our ancestors so much as, well, to an extent they were our ancestors, but more in, it's more to the point that they were the people who preceded the majority of our ancestors because our people really arrived in the end of the Neolithic and they built those Bronze Age structures like Grimm's Pound that I showed you just before. These Neolithic structures were here already when they arrived and they must have been as captivated by the shocking structures as we are. These enormous stones standing solemnly like ancient people in a circle. Not all of them are aligned to the sun or the stars as far as we can tell, but some of them appear to be. So we can't really be certain of what exactly their function was. And that makes them all the more fascinating. This one, in this desolate landscape, it was built, when it was built, the landscape was very much as it is now, desolate. You see, this landscape is very, very ancient, but also not natural. It's a man-made landscape. But it's so ancient that it, it feels like a part of nature. It feels like something that's been here for so long. I mean, the Neolithic is the end of the Stone Age. This landscape has not changed since then. There's nothing you can see, except for those pine trees, which are modern, of course. But everything else is Neolithic. And, I mean, it's been a long time since native broadleaf forests have been here, like the Stone Age, basically. This thing's been here as well since the Stone Age. I, I mean, we know for certain, all we can say for certain about these is that they had a religious function. Stonehenge is associated with uh, sacrifices. People brought pigs there for sacrifice. Pigs were really important food for the Neolithic people. They were very big on pigs. And people brought pigs from as far away as Orkney all the way to Stonehenge to sacrifice them there. Did people bring pigs here to sacrifice? Was this an important site of pilgrimage? I don't know. But it's quite reasonable to think that there were animal sacrifices here. But to who? To which god? 
we'll never know. We'll never know the names of the gods that they worshipped or goddesses. We'll never know whether these were associated with a particular deity. We'll never know that. But we do know that there was pig sacrifices. And we know that this culture of ne Neolithic stone circles extended over a vast distance from France, parts further south as well in the Mediterranean, all the way up to no the northern Orkney Islands, um, which are north of Scotland. And that Britain is a hotspot for them. And here on Dartmoor, they still seem like they're more at home on the landscape than, than I am or any of the modern people who have come here since. The sheep and the stones. Water is a magical element with deep spiritual meanings in most religions, including those of our ancestors. In Exmoor and Dartmoor, one finds these extraordinary clapper bridges made from enormous stones. Some claim they date back to the Neolithic, but they may only go back as far as the Anglo-Saxons. These women are Lithuanian pagans on holiday in Dartmoor, and they're honouring the bridge with their music. Some of these tourists are less welcome, though. Nice doggy. <laughs> Get out of the way, nice doggy. Oh. Is it dead? I need to cross this clapper bridge to reach a magic stone. As you can see here, this is a naturally forming hole in the rock. And the funny thing is, in, in Britain, these have a special folk significance in, in folklore. This particular one, uh, it leads into the water. So the idea here, and it's big enough for a full grown human to go through. So around here, it's said that if you jump into the water through this hole, You'll, and you're a woman, you'll get pregnant. So it's a fertility. Um, and similar things elsewhere occur, but also there's a kind of a belief that going through naturally forming holes um, in folklore in Britain, it will actually heal you of ailments. So this one's unique because it's more about fertility. The um, holes that form in trees have traditionally been used to, you know, like a natural forming hole in the tree. You push your baby through the hole and that will make sure it's strong and it will like, cure it of any ailments it might be suffering from. It, to bring things back to the Neolithic stuff, up on the northern islands of Orkney, they have, um, there used to be a stone, among there are many standing stones there from the Neolithic. There used to be a one there which had a hole in it. It was a standing stone with a big hole, pretty impressive. And um, it, uh, it was renamed, I don't know what it was called in the Neolithic times, but when the Vikings took over Orkney, they named it Odin Stone. And some people think that's because the hole was considered to be like representative of Odin's eye. As good an explanation as any I could come up with. But funnily enough, right up until the 19th century, the local people believed that putting your child through the hole or climbing through the hole yourself would, would have health and healing properties. And that is something that people continue to do until very recently, when a farmer who owned the land that the Odin stone stood on, dynamited the stone, because he was so fed up with people coming there and doing their pagan practices. Um, I'm not sure if it was a religious rebellion that the farmer did this, or just he just didn't like people trespassing on his property. In either case, we've lost a very valuable piece of our history and our culture by losing that stone. But this stone is not in risk of being dynamited. Uh, I think it's because it's on the, on the public uh, national park. So if ever you're in Dartmoor, jump through here and you'll have a baby. I don't think I'll go through though because uh, the water's a bit low and it's not enough room for me to swim. And I don't think I've got much chance of getting pregnant anyhow.
Upriver from Tar Steps in Exmoor is this wishing tree. Too many wishes were made and it died from all the coins hammered into it. Now it resembles a piece of modern art. With this project, the artist seeks to decolonize and rewild currency from a natural perspective. <laughs> this is a memorial stone erected for a 6th century Christian Celt who claimed descent from the 1st century Celtic chief Caractacus, who was a hero resisting the Romans. If you found this moorland folklore moorish, then perhaps you should watch this film of me being attacked by a pack of demonic ghost hounds in a haunted forest in Dartmoor called Wistman's Wood. I also made a film about a haunted burial mound on Exmoor. Click subscribe and then the bell to make sure you are notified when I upload my next video. I cover the ancient history of the British people and other peoples, their religions and their DNA. You can also get access to exclusive videos if you become a patron on Subscribestar or Patreon for as little as $1 per video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.